Leaders are the greatest! Okay, this isn't like a typical introduction to a uh, build video, but this is what we got. This is a 76 Aspen. I'm having to make this short because I don't have a whole lot of time. So my buddy's yard, if you saw the video with all the 50 Mopars getting crushed or sold, well, yeah, that's one of the cars. That's, that's a $400 seven. charger. $400 charger. All right, so we got another third gen charger. I would show you this one, but I saw this one and I was like, all right, I kind of want the Aspen. So I got the Aspen. Aspen sold. Aspen sold. All right. We got a problem with it is one side doesn't have a spindle and then there is no wheels and tires and there's no brakes. But this is it. This does have, however, a 360 in it with an aluminum racing. How do I get the hood open on this thing? Okay. Yeah, oh, it's got chrome valve covers with the aluminum racing intake manifold. So that's kind of the only reason I got this thing because it's got 360 with that intake on it. Of course, that's probably a really crappy intake, but I don't care. This car was 600 bucks. If I just get a spindle and brakes for this side, was it missing upper control arm too? Dang it. Okay, it's missing upper control arm too. Anyway, reason I gotta make this quick and I'm probably just gonna dump this thing off the trailer and put it right here is because back over there and get more cars. Whatever's left in that yard after tomorrow, smushed it. We gotta get the Aspen mobile because right now this thing does not move unless we've got those uh, wheel dollies underneath the suspension. So we're missing some suspension parts, we're missing some engine parts. And Derek said there's a diplomat at pick apart. So me and him are gonna head over there right now and go check it out and see what kind of goodies we can get for this heap. Okay, we're here at pick apart trying to find the left front suspension. And we got this diplomat here that this thing is mint. I can't believe somebody junked this thing. Look, it's got a brand new rebuilt carburetor on it. It's got a new alternator. It's got a new fuel pump on it. All this is new. I mean, they put new, this has brand new brake pads on it. All this, this car is so good. Look at the interior on this thing, Derek. Oh, wow, man. This is like full on grandpa special. No, oh, that radiator is not really that great. It's a little clogged in there. But I tell you what, it's a lot better than the radiator we got because we ain't got one. All right, so Derek, Let's, uh, oh, I need that clutch. Oh man, that clutch fan is good. So we need that clutch fan. We need this water pump pulley. Hell, we should grab that alternator too, because that thing's brand new. I was just gonna say, grab it. I bet you that water pump is new too, or new-ish. Wow. We don't have a whole lot of time to close up 430. What is it now, like 320? So let's start ripping this thing apart. Oh man, there's a brand new coil on this thing too. That man, this Diplomat is a perfect donor car. Everything on here is mint and new with receipts. Uh, oh, you know what we do need? We need this guy. Oh, never mind, we don't need that guy. 
<laughs> I would have grabbed that distributor, but that distributor is one of those locked out, uh, like electronic timing controlled ones. So that won't exactly work in the Aspen. This is a little too, damn bear, are you looking at me or what? Are you trying to count how many nose hairs I got? Damn. <laughs> I ain't that pretty, they don't need that close. No, I was not shining at the distributor. All right. Who would have thought a diplomat would come in handy? You know what? As remembrance of this car, let's take the emblem. All right. This car did not die in vain. $270 score. I know that seems like a lot at a junkyard or pick apart, but if I would have had to buy all that stuff to make this car run and drive, which I have no idea if it runs. I'm actually kind of hoping it runs. The only reason I wanted this thing is I saw the aluminum intake manifold on it and it's got 360 in it. So I was like, ooh, and then I made it mine and it's like, ah, oh, do I really need that? No, I mean, it's an F body. This is what replaced the A body. This replaced the Duster, replaced the Valiant. This is the Valari Aspen F bodies. So this one here is particularly an Aspen, which was from 76 to 1980. Uh, actually, it was a pretty decent car. They're just god awful ugly. I mean, there's got to be something about this car I like. If we walk around it, it's big old ugly bumpers. It look like mid 60s Nova taillights. The interior, I don't know. Uh, come on, there you go. Well, it's got a console, that's kind of cool. The oh, never mind, the bezel's right there. I said the bezel's missing, but I really haven't like looked over this car well at all. Has the typical door pop. Um, still trying to find something cool on it. All right, officially, there is nothing cool about this car. But luckily, like you saw earlier at Pick Apart, we got all these goodies here and they're all in really good shape. I didn't even know I was missing the alternator. I just grabbed the alternator because I was like, hey, that thing's shiny and new with receipts. And then, lo and behold, we're missing an alternator. All right, so I guess we left some of the hardware back at Pick Apart, but luckily, the road runners that we picked up, I need the castle nut off the lower control arm so I can try and put it on that control arm. Oh, they bashed it. So when they were removing the old spindle off this thing, they bashed the top of the, uh, the stud with a freaking hammer so it mashed the threads in. Oh, there it goes. That's good. So sometimes if the stud is spinning on you, you can just put pressure on the bottom of the tie rod and that forces the taper, or that forces the pin into the taper of the, uh, of the uh, spindle. And now it does not spin it no more. Now I can tighten it up and move on. Here, go ahead and uh, open the door and turn it and make sure nothing's gonna bind up or break or whatever. Yeah, you gotta lift up on it a little bit. Turn it. I can't. It, the, the steering wheel is locked. Is there no key in it? Turn the key. Oh, there's no key, is there? No key. Dang it. All right, I'm going to go back to the I'm going to go to the old house, Derek, and go grab the stuff I need to remove the steering wheel. Oh, I hate getting in the old, dusty, freaking desert cars because you come out looking like you've just been rolling in dirt. I got to try and get this freaking door open. Oh, here we go. Could do it from the inside. Outside. Here we go. Alright. I got the tools I need to take the steering wheel off. Alright. It's rolling and steering. Actually, that looks kind of cool with that rally wheel on there. Kind of dig that. We're just going to stuff this thing in that hole over there just to get it out of the way so i can continue moving in and then we will get it running and driving but i gotta get moved in first so i will see you in a little while 
when we start to work on this car. In the meantime, poof. Now it's winter time. And actually, this car has been sitting in this spot for a year now. No, over a year. Like a year in like one month is how long this car has been sitting in this spot since I pulled it out of that junkyard. Between everything else going on, finally getting a chance to work on this thing, thanks to the help of my followers, which had generously donated a bunch of parts that we're going to hop this thing up and get it ready. And we're gonna drag this thing out of here using, let's see if we got a strap up. Oh, what is this strap running to? The red duster from Roadkill. Yep, I just finished putting floors in this thing for David and Roadkill. And I'm like, you know what? It's already in the spot. We might as well use this thing to pull that thing under this thing so that we can yank the engine out of that thing, clean it all up, get the engine back in that thing after we rebuild it, fix it up, and go racing. Officially on concrete, the 1977 Dodge Aspen. And I know a lot of you are thinking, why? Why the hell would you even bother with this? Well, well even Bolt's wondering. He's, he's sniffing the car. He's like, what the hell is this thing doing here in House of Muscle Cars? Well, this has now become the poor man muscle car. <laughs> And I, which is why I have it, because I could only afford the $600 it took to buy it at the time. And, uh, well, this is one of Dodge's last V8 rear-wheel drive cars for a long time. And you had three different engine options. You had the 225 Slant 6, which I think is 225. If I'm wrong, I'm just going to say Slant 6. And then you had the 318, and you had a 360. Since posting pictures of this car and video, the previous owner of this car from the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, actually contacted me and sent me pictures of this car. This car was originally green. You can see it. He painted it white and he verified that. He's like, yeah, the car used to be green. I painted it white. You know, we hopped up the engine a little bit and good to know. He's like, yeah, I used to burn tires, both of them for a long distance, which tells me, hey, it's got a sure grip in it or at least a burned up one. But anyways, he sent me pictures, it had big old fatty slots in the back, had smaller slots in the front, and this was his little hot rod. And then he sold it to a teenager, which then the teenager did who knows what with it, and then it ended up into the Mopar junkyard that you saw me pull it out of at Doug Schneider's yard, which is now no longer in existence. The interior is completely clapped out. Typical desert roach scar. And it's full of rat poop. Derek loves rat poop. Are you going to use your hands or the vacuum to clean this one out, Derek? The vacuum. Okay. You notice how he had to think about that for a second. Voila. That is hideous. But you can see it's green. Oh, yep. Here's the old, here's our donor diplomat. One good thing about this car, though, it does have electronic ignition. Although we're missing the distributor and a bunch of parts. But you know what? I got a whole batch of cool parts for this car from you guys and we're going to install those things we got a new intake manifold we got a new camshaft courtesy of Howard's cams yep good old bump sticks I've got their bump sticks in a bunch of my cars and we've got uh, the cooling system from the diplomat ignition systems we got plugs wires we got suspension parts we got new master cylinder seat covers we even got air fresheners yep because you know this car is going to stank my plan we're just going to rip the drivetrain out real quick go ahead and tear it down so that way i know what to order you know i need because I, I need to know what piston rings i need i, need, I mean i need to know a few different things or we never even see if this engine rotates did we you didn't see that it was that was already broken Ah, oh, it rotates. Okay, good. 
That's a good sign. Okay. Poor Aspen. Why do you got to break that, Derek? Oop, got to hide the evidence there. Start ripping it apart. First thing first, the AC system. When I was a teenager, this was the very first thing to get ripped off of a car. So let's rip the AC compressor out of the way, all the hoses, the brackets, everything. I mean, now that I'm older, I kind of like AC systems, but uh, this one here and what we're gonna do with this car, I'm like reverting back to my teenage years where the first thing I did was yank these things off and chuck them. <laughs> Next. Work out your frustrations, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the pile. I probably should have just undone the cross member for the transmission so it can drop down a little bit to get these bolts easier, but uh, no, I didn't. And so now I'm trying to get this damn bolt. Ugh. I hate you. Yay! Freedom! And that was the easy part. Now the disassembly and the build starts. stuff in the junk pile. Well, this thing's got a tow hitch on it. We don't need no freaking tow hitch. And, you know, sitting under this car and looking at it, I think what also makes these cars so hideous is the size of these freaking bumpers, man. They stick out like, you know, like four inches on each side. Like mini parachutes. Like, I can see the front bumper and it is the widest part of the whole freaking car. So, it's almost like we need to do some bumper shaving on this thing, because that is ridiculous. All right, well, I'm gonna finish getting this uh, tow hitch off. We don't need this. Oh, yeah. like freaking 15 pounds right there. Got the grungy Aspen motor indoors because it is way too cold outside. It's like 47 degrees in the garage and it's probably like 37 degrees outside. <laughs> but we got, we're gonna start ripping this thing apart here and I can't wait to get the world's crappiest aluminum foil. Actually, you're not crappy. Speaking of that, there is rat poop inside this thing. So this is the crappiest intake manifold. Not just because there's poop in there, but because of the design of it. It is terrible. Like a stock two barrel manifold probably makes more power than this <laughs> rappy four barrel manifold. So yank that off, rip it apart so we can see what this engine needs. Plus I need to get these pistons out because I have a plan in mind to up the compression. Not a good plan, nor do I recommend it. But it's something that we're going to try because it's cheap and it will make power. It's always a nice surprise when you tear down your shitbox motor and find out it's already been rebuilt at one point. It's got 30 over pistons in it. 
and the cylinder walls are mint. So we're just gonna dingle ball this sucker, put new piston rings on it. Uh, since we're not wanting to spend any money, just time, I'm gonna go ahead and weld that dish up and maybe I'll even add a little tiny dome here just so we can bump this guy up to the compression that it would want with that Howard's cam right there. Oh wait, hold on. We're not doing Howard's justice right here. There we go. And that's not even the box. That one is. Oh wait, dang it, we're not doing justice again. It's upside down. There we go. And look at that, American flags. Oh yeah, why would you not wanna buy something from a company that's made here in the States, 100% and got the good old American flags on it. I don't see very many camshaft companies out there with the American flag on it, do you? That's one right there. And to bump this engine compression up, we're gonna go ahead and weld these pistons up. And I even told Luke at Howard's Cam what I'm doing and he's like, don't tell your camshaft guy you're going to weld pistons up. <laughs> Oh man, I can just feel the heat coming off that thing and it feels good because it's only like 48 degrees in the garage right now. So this piston feels good, a little hand warmer. Tell you what, practice makes perfect. Look at the dome on that one. <laughs> this is ridiculously cool. As long as it works. While I'm still in here welding up pistons, I've only got one more to go. So I gotta weld this whole thing up and then add a dome to it. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get you guys set up the time lapse watching Derek yank the interior out of the Aspen. Yep, the interior is pretty nasty. It's all rat poop infested and desert roached so the whole thing's gonna be dusty and dirty and i'm kind of glad derek's gonna do it that's what that's the benefits of being the higher rank guy working on the cars and then once the interior is out we're just gonna take this car down to the uh coin op car wash and blow this sucker out Yep, it's the quarter car wash. Actually, it's the modern age. It's the uh, debit card car wash. But uh, gotta get this thing cleaned out. It is nasty, it is filthy. Let's swipe the card, pull the trigger, and blow the dirt off. is like restored now. Just take this thing to Barrett Jackson, what do you think, Derek? Surprisingly enough, it does look way, way way better than it did. Yep, we can actually see green paint under here instead of just dirt and grease and grime. And look, the interior, I wouldn't mind sitting in this car now, except 
it's loaded with parts. And a lot of these parts were donated by you guys. Thank you for that. This is gonna be so much better. We got cams and, uh, and mufflers and intakes and you know ignition systems and starters and gauges and carburetors, valve covers. You know, we got some speedy parts. We got some stopping parts. And I think we even have a few suspension parts. The engine, I ordered a bunch of, uh, you know, like rebuild stuff for the engine. So I'm working on that right now. I just finished weight matching all the pistons. All right, I got a stock piston here. I haven't welded on this one yet. So and it, it comes in at 1506 without the bearing and without the rings. So I need to get the welded ones to match that. Now it's down to the machining process. So that way we can get all these custom made pistons down to the micron on accuracy. Yep. All of that came off of the bottom side of this piston and the sides of it. Yep, cut the skirts way down because I don't care about longevity of this engine. We just need to make horsepowers. So I'm almost there. Hold on one second. All right, as long as this number says 1506, we are there. Dang it. I am now professional racing engine car builder. Look at this. We have the stock 360 LA pistons that had a huge dish in them, welded up and then added some domes. Oh yeah. Race car engine right before you. <laughs> I hope this crap works. We got to work what's on top of the pistons now to get this engine complete. So I'm actually still waiting for the rear main seal before I can actually put the crankshaft back in the block. Cylinder heads. So these are 360 J heads. I believe these actually, you know what? I never even looked to see if this was the numbers matching motor. So it should be, oh yeah, there's the number. Last three digits are three, six, eight. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> that's, that's as far as I'm going to make. It's a 77 Aspen. Who cares if it's numbers matching? Another thing I need to do is I need more lift out of this. That is only like 490 thousandths of lift when my cam is 515. So I need to pull all the valves out. And I'm going to clean the carbon off the valves. And then I'm going to just take a ginormous drill bit and cut down some of that valve guide because it doesn't have to be professional. If you've seen whatever else is going on in this motor, it just has to function. And so function, it will. This engine's been sitting so long, all these guides are just so crust, or all the valve stem seals are so crusty. Ah, come on, Hercules. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's a cold and sprinkly day today. It's supposed to be like that all day. So all I'm doing right now is I'm labeling which ones are probably going to fail, which this one is going to get an X on it for death that it's probably going to fail because this is one of the ones that's that's tight. This one's pretty tight to move. I might still move it with one hand, but you know, it's, it's tight. So this one's going to get the X of death as in this is one of the ones that's probably going to fail. These ones here were fine. Like this one here, you can shove it in there. You know, not a big deal. It's a, it's a tiny bit tight, but even stock, these things are, it's a tiny bit tight. So those two will free up. What I am gonna try and do though, 
is heat this piston up a little bit because as soon as I throw just a tiny bit of heat to these pistons, they free up and then they're floppy again. So I think what I'm gonna do is heat it up just a little bit, make sure I get some oil all around that wrist pin so that when it cools down and shrinks, there at least will be some kind of oil for when I first fire it up. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Label the rods of death or the pistons of death. And uh, I've got rings and bearings and eight welded up pistons that's going to go into the Aspirin's engine. All the pistons and rods are in. And it's a little bit harder to spin than normal. I mean, it's not locked up by any means, but you can definitely tell there's a few tight spots in those wrist pins. So I want to know and comment below. Do you think this engine is going to scatter or do you think it's going to survive? So this is top dead center on one and two, four, six. And <laughs> To show you how low of compression this 360 was before I even welded these pistons. So number one is that top dead center. That's as high as that piston will go. Even with the dome on there, it's still below the deck of the piston. And that dome is an eighth inch tall. So these pistons were in the hole a lot. This was like a seven and a half to one compression motor. It's probably still only like nine to one now. Oh well, nine to one is better than seven and a half. That is simple math. Aspen's engine is painted. Can't wait to show you guys this thing. Oh yeah, pastel green. Check it out, be amazed. Nah, just kidding, that's a direct to metal primer. Getting ready to throw some real color on it right now. The only reason I'm using this color is because I accidentally screwed up and bought the wrong color. So this is kind of like what I would assume to be like close to 440 orange anyway. And uh, I'm gonna use it cause I got it and it's single stage. So it's spray and done. Go, 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 go. All right, Leonard with the Hell Kitty showed up. So he'll be my camera guy for a minute. Pull this uh, wood green custom radio bezel off. Let's see if these racing summit gauges will fit in there. You want a souvenir, Leonard? Nah. Ooh, it might fit. It might fit. Look at that. It's like it was meant to go there. Spiffy. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I like that. They are better. Now I got a steel backing. One thing about working on old grungy cars is just having to get all the grease and grime out of the way just so you can replace the parts. Yep. All old grungy dirt road cars. Yep. Shiny parts on, junk parts off. Every time I'm taking one of these old cars apart, one of the best tools to have. Just heat up all the rusty areas, even if it's not really rusty, this is way better than any of that spray crap you get. Simple. Ooh, these brake pads have silencers on the back of them. 
so we won't have to le listen to pesky squeaky brake pads while we're out there off-roading. And on to the rear brakes. Yep, they're clapped out, they're old. It was missing the drums, that's why it's covered in dirt. And that's why the brake pads are separating from the steel liner. Time to replace it with new garbage. Oh yeah, rear brakes. Cannot have a dirt car without rear brakes. Dunzo. Well, it's another gloomy day here in Las Vegas. It finally quit raining. So I'm like, you know what? We'll put in a few hours on the Aspen today. Gonna mount the master cylinder. And I'm really digging this uh, boat gas cap that was sent to me. So we're gonna find a way to mount that sucker onto there. And then I gotta go get some drums because those are 10 and a half inch. And the only thing I've got is 11 and a half and nines. So I've gotta go buy some freaking drums. Got myself a brand spanking new master cylinder right here. I was gonna rebuild that one that uh, Hot Rod Girl sent me until I found this. You can tell this didn't come right out of a package because it's all a little bit rusty in the back. I had this sitting in a box in the uh, parts room. So I'm like, oh, well, hell. I'll just use this sucker as long as it bolts up. It's a four bolt, so it should. All right, put my bolts on there, master cylinder and brake lines, and it's like almost restored under the hood. Ah, now it fits perfect. See, and then when I come in for my pit stop, yeah, quick fuel. Smoke that razor. What do you think, Leonard? Poison. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard. Oh, and we got Jason here, the other big, tall, ugly guy. My spoiler is looking naked since it's raining outside and this is under here. We could take the wet spoiler and put it in the dry area on the trunk lid. Oh, he got my hint. There you go. Yeah, see. Are you getting what I was putting down? Yup. Okay. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, plop it on there. Yeah, see. The letters oh. are that way. Yeah, I know. It doesn't matter where the letters are. <laughs> you don't need to read it. No. Well, yeah. They'll be able to, no at least they'll see the sponsor name from the NASA satellite. Oh. Oh, he's shooting a rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it'll be backwards, though. Okay, that's true. Yeah, it'll be backwards. <laughs> but at least we have a cool looking spoiler. Island of Misfit Mopar. Or does it go the other way? Oh, you know what? It does go the other way. I say, it, it looks yeah, it does. Good. Am I the only one that's not yeah, this thinking. Well, because this has that notch there. Am I the only one? So, oh, and this has the notch there. Shit. Yeah, so it does go like that. So, oh, ooh, yeah, here you go. Leonard was right for once. As always. High five, Leonard. As always. Good job, buddy. <laughs> so, we'll just dab some grease around that. Dab some grease around this guy. And this guy. You know, see, I was actually going to make like a template and make it all, you know, make it to where it fit perfect and everything. And Leonard's like, well, why don't you just put some grease on there? And I'm like, Durr. damn it. Okay, Leonard. <laughs> About there. All right. Oh, that one slid, huh? Wow, look at that. Perfect. That, that worked pretty good. <laughs> huh? All right. It even it even left us hole imprints. <laughs> I know that one slid a little bit, so we'll go to the top. Yep. Dang, that looks... actually made the whole back of the car not look so stupid. No, it looks sporty. <laughs> racing 150 mile an hour rear spoiler. We got our racing gas cap. We put our snorkel on this thing. This is like full blown race car, huh, Leonard? 100%. Cuz race car. See, normally I don't read directions, but uh, 
I've never done one of these steering wheel wraps before. And this got sent to me and this steering wheel is all chewed up. So instead of cutting my hands on all the broken up plastic, the guy sent me a nice cover for the steering wheel. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And uh, I think we'll get it nice, at least nice enough for this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish wrapping this thing and then I think we're going to move on to trying to get the seats in this sucker. So I'll show you the steering wheel after like the fourth attempt and then I just say screw it and let Leonard finish it. <laughs> we have no idea what these seats came out of, but luckily the tracks that were still in this car bolted right to these seats. So these have to be like around this generation type car, but they ain't green. And then we've got some seat tracks or some uh, seat covers to put on this seat too. Oh wait, why is that not lined up? Oh wait, there it is. Come on, fall into hoe. Well, I gotta pull this seat back out because when you sit in it, you're like kind of like leaning and tilting back on the right side here. So this seat frame is busted. The other one, however, is still good. So the passengers will be screwed while I get the good one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't break it. That's the seat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> seat's position will work. Hopefully the seat stays bolted to the car. Oh yeah. Tachometer professionally installed. Bolt, what do you think? Is it good looking? That's right. Bolt can't even get away from this thing. He's just been lying down next to it for a while, just admiring how shiny it is and how much it glistens. And then he realizes it's going to go into that piece of junk. Yep, the Aspen. This pretty looking motor is going to make its way over here not in the trunk not inside the car but in here amongst all this rattiness i like my ratty cars but the engines to me have got to be shiny and pretty and just make it look like it makes horsepowers in that 71 RT episode I did a while back where I went and duct, uh, raced it at duct tape drags, it was hard for me not to make the engine look good because I had to make the car look like crap, make it look like it was worthless. And, and worthless it was because it didn't sell. If you haven't seen that episode, go back and check it out. 71 RT Charger gets plucked from the junkyard and turned into a drag car. It's pretty good. I like it. Back to this motor here. Looking good, right? So I took the factory AC bracket, cut off the mounts for the AC compressor, and then welded on a support brace. So that way, the alternator is rigid enough to do what I need to do. I wanted to put headers on it, but it just wasn't in the budget. So we at least made the exhaust manifolds look better. Again, can't make the engine look like crap. It's gotta look spiffy. And spiffy it does. Does it have oil pressure? I haven't found out yet. So I got my drill. I've got my primer. As long as this thing has like 20 pounds cold in low gear, I'm just gonna say good enough and send it. It kind of scared me there for a minute it uh obviously had a bunch of air to bleed out of the system because now even at low speed look at that 70 pounds and you can actually see how slow it's spinning so 
I think we're good enough to drop it in. Finally get to open this box that one of my followers had sent me. The Mopar Conversion Distributor Kit. Oh yeah, cuz race car. If you were ordering this, I could see this being really confusing. It's for 273 to 360 small block engines, but the part number is 44426. Someone could have done a better job on that. See, I always take my distributors and the mechanical advance, I weld up, there it is, I weld up half the slot right there so that way I could have more initial timing so it's more snappier. And I got this thing set up on the vise. Look, it, well, you can't feel it, but I'm telling you, there is a crap load of spring pressure on that mechanical advance. What do they think this thing is? Like a 20,000 RPM engine? I want this thing to be like full mechanical advance, like 2,500. So we're probably definitely gonna have to change those springs. That's a no buenos in my books, and I need to weld up half the slot so we get more instant horsey powers. Whew. All right, by my calculations, I'm going to assume that this will be about eight to nine degrees mechanical advance and be full in at say 25 to 3000 RPM. Okay, it fell in place. Now the transmission is bolted to the engine. Well, with two of the main bolts anyway. Now I gotta get the top bell housing bolts. I gotta get the converter bolts. I gotta get a whole lot of other hardware hooked up to this thing. So it's gonna be a couple hours of just turning wrenches under the car. Pretty boring stuff and I will save you that. Well, it's yet another crappy rainy day here in Las Vegas. I should have left my freaking beard on there, man, because now it feels all cold. Now I got to get a haircut because now I just look goofy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just kind of cold and been sprinkling all day. I left my freaking tools outside because it wasn't supposed to rain today because the weatherman's a piece of crap. But, uh, yeah. At least today I can get caught up on certain things like getting my carburetor rebuilt and then going and running around and, and picking up little odds and end things like battery cables, battery box, all the, all the little piddly things that just take up time. So it's a good thing I got sent multiple carbs from multiple people so that way I can rob pieces and parts from different ones to make one functional carburetor. Scratch that. It's taking three carburetors to make one good one. Ah, things that take way too long. More monies later, but look at this. Doesn't that engine just make... No, no, never mind. <laughs> it still looks like crap under there. But at least it looks better in the engine area, which if we eliminate everything else, just, you know, this immediate engine area, it looks amazing. But in order to make amazing run, I got to hook up some power leads to it, got to hook some plumbing to it. So I've got fuel lines to hook up, power string hoses to hook up. I've got the oil pressure gauge, the water temp gauge, and time to put the starter in. I always like to get my leads on it before I shove the starter in the car. That way I'm not under the car or trying to finagle through headers to get that tiny little nut on and that bolt with a wrench and getting like eighth inch of moving at a time. Put it on beforehand, slap it in. This is like the vital important part to know if this thing is gonna stay running is getting this hooked up, oil pressure gauge line. And I have learned from the last duct tape drags video that even if it's going to be for a short period of time, don't skimp out and get the plastic line. Yep, get the brass or copper, get the copper line. Even if it's a short period of time, that plastic line blows off, poof, blows your chances of winning anything. Yeah, stuck indoors again, because guess what? Here in the desert, it's raining again. 
granted it's just like a light spr or well, it's like a light sprinkle drizzle whatever but i mean it's enough that all day it's wet muddy and just overall sucks so it gives me plenty of time to be indoors and get the carburetor ready for the aspen and really it's just going to be bolting it together throwing out blowing out all the uh, orifices and we can't have this in the way that is horsepower robbing There was a broken screw there. So instead of spending the time drilling it out properly and all that crap, let's just drill it out more biggers and then just plug weld it. And technically, that one bore is gonna make more horsey powers because look, there's no button. No button of a head of a screw or a stud sticking out the backside. More airflow means more horsepower. The carburetor is on, way too much work. Should have just went and got one because the amount of time I have in that one carburetor, digging and trying to find the parts to make that one work out of three different carburetors, totally not worth it. You might not notice this, but there's a giant rod sticking out of the engine bay right now. Yeah, I am actually having to try and bend. There we go, I need to watch the... Yeah. Is it better? Okay, that is better. So, you notice this power string pulley right here that was like this. That was broken and welded it back together, but when that broke, it just distorted all the other metal when I finally got it bolted to the engine. So, easy fix. Just bolt it back up with what'll work. Stick a giant pipe in there and bend it back into shape. Look at all that crap over there. Doesn't everything look so much better as a race car when you just rip it all out and put like four wires back in the car? It's kind of what I'm thinking about at this moment. Cause all those wires are hideous. They may need to disappear. I got time to think about that as I'm hooking up all this crap. All right, that's ignition box goes there. I can see the mounting holes for it. That's the distributor plug for the pickup, but distributor way the hell over there. This is like for a big block. What the? Then we got this other harness here that I have no idea. Wait, that's a just. Oh, it's an extension. It's an extension for the distributor. This, ah, oh. okay, yep, no, uh-uh. No, fixing that, right? Now, don't need that. What else don't we need? Oh, wait. AC crap, don't need that. I have no idea what that plug does. I have no idea what this one does. That looks like for AC, don't need that. All this ugliness. What is all this crap? Well, whatever that was. Okay, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. What is this? Crap. What the hell does this do? You know what? Don't do nothing no more. It's looking prettier already. Yeah, we don't need that one. Goodbye. Not only is it cleaner, but it's lightweight and faster now. Yeah, I know the correct color for this engine. For a 360 Aspen is supposed to be like corporate blue or something boring like that. But blue doesn't just mean horsepower. I mean, 
Even the ignition box is orange, and that means power, just like the engine. So, orange it is. Getting ready to put my racing ignition box on here. Just trying to clean the threads up on this so I get a good ground. Because these things do not work good unless they're grounded. Actually, they don't work at all unless they're grounded. That's why the paint is, that's why there's no paint on the, uh, the mounting bolts because it's supposed to be grounded good. So just making sure I'm getting a good ground. I like adding horsepower stuff. Like anything that makes a car faster, handle better is so much fun to bolt together. But if it's just like, maintenance repairs it's just like eh, dang it i gotta do it but when it's like horsepower stuff it's like yeah <laughs> i guess i'm gonna have to put the car on its lid to read that why would they put the sticker upside down stupid day six of it raining in las vegas i I hate this shit. I hate weather. I don't like snow. I don't like rain. I don't like any of that. I want it hot and dry all the time. So that way it doesn't interfere with my car projects. Another thing I hate about rain is all of us that had old cars, we know the windshield gaskets all leak. I got to replace the one on, well, all three. That one I'm not worried about because I replaced the windshield gasket in that one. I, I glued it in so it's all good. But every time it rains, cars fill up with water. It sucks ass. It's humid in the car. Hate it. As for the Aspen, and today I need to get this thing done. So I need to finish the fuel line, the throttle linkage. I need to work on uh, tranny lines. And I'm gonna try and do it the easiest and cheapest way possible. I ripped the old transmission lines out because I'm like, you know what? I'll just put a tranny cooler on it and I won't need this crap. <laughs> well, now that it's down to the wire and how much money I have in this thing, it's like, no. The original radiator still has the tranny cooler in it and I think it wasn't leaking. So we're going to go ahead and just hook it back up to the original cooler inside the transmission because it's not like this car is going to be driving for hours on end. This thing's gonna see like 15 minutes at a time, maybe, so. Okay, I got my transmission lines cut, shortened, and put a uh, little ball end on so I can actually just put push hose on it. Let's see if these suckers will actually fit now. I forgot which one's which. I think this is the short one. So I'm gonna finish getting these lines in, finish getting that trans cooler done. And then I can move on to throttle linkage. I put a battery in it and nothing works. And so I'm having to diagnose wiring issues. And it's freaking raining again. And the door won't open. Ugh. I hate you, Aspen. Yeah, Bolt knows when I get upset. He comes over and he wants me to pet him. He's like, hey man, don't worry about it. It's a good little Aspen. No, it's not. So look at my custom ignition right there. So the fastest seatbelt light used to come on and then the dash smoked and now nothing works. <laughs> Should have just put a freaking toggle switch on this thing. But I have, think I figured out all the wiring. I now have pow power to the ballast. I have power to the coil. I got power to the ignition box. I do not get uh, starting power. So the, the starter wire in the ignition switch is fried down under the column. That's probably why there was jumper wires, everything, because it wasn't getting any power to the ballast and all, all that uh, Mickey Mouse wiring I yanked out of it. Well, it was in there for a reason because there was a lot of burned up wires. So 
I'm gonna have to put a starter button on this thing, but you know what? <laughs> that means a race car. All right, so I'm getting my battery in it. Got my installation tool here. All right, I don't have any gas in this thing yet, and it's too late to fire it up and break in the cam because it's like, as you can see, pretty quiet neighborhood. There's no noise anywhere. Only noise is me. All right, well, I got a battery in it. I know I'm getting power to the ballast, coil, and the ignition box. I'm just gonna spray some starting fluid down the throttle, down throttle body, down the carburetor, and see if this thing will kick over. I've got my temporary jumper wire here for the starter. This is just running down to the starter, and I'll put, I'll run it through the firewall and put a button on it later, but uh, let's just see what happens. Make sure the key's on. All right, key is on. Come on, baby. Ooh, I think that means it's really retarded. So we'll just put some timing in that sucker. Let's try that again. blowing paint off the freaking hood uh something's not right all right this is where we see if i'm a dummy or not did i put it 180 out we're gonna pull one the number one plug out i'm gonna stick my finger in the hole and then bump the starter if it blows compression on my finger when the I that'll be at top dead center, you'll see the timing marker down there. If it blows compression on my finger, and the uh, the uh, rotor is aimed towards number one, like how I said it went uh, before, then it's correct. If it's aiming the opposite direction, I'm a dummy, and you pull the distributor up, flip it 180, drop it back in. <sighs> I'm hoping I'm just a dummy. Finger into hoe. It's a, it's a suction side. I can feel it on my finger. All right, that was compression. And it looks like, oh yeah, we're dead on, top dead center on zero. So now I just need to pull the distributor cap off and see which way the pointer's aimed. All right, which way is it aimed? Oh, damn it. Actually, I'm a dummy. See? Pointed at the firewall. Should be aimed forward at number one. Got the distributor back down. It's corrected from the 180 dummy move. Let's just see what happens now. Go ahead and turn my key on. Okay, there it goes. Come on, baby. Kind of scared of <laughs> All right, here we go. Whoa, that made noise. Oh, oh this thing is gonna run. <laughs> oh, yes. Tomorrow, this thing is going to run. Actually, it fired, but tomorrow this thing is going to run. I'm hungry. It's late. I don't hate you so much no more, Aspen. I see a little bit of blue sky today. That is high hopes for me. The ground is still soggy, muddy. Everything is damp, but you know what? And it's cold, but that makes a great day to break in a camshaft. Less likely the engine will overheat. So. I need to get my fluids in this motor. Yep, tranny fluid, power steering fluid, and my power steering pressure hose hasn't showed up yet, so I just took a piece of a uh, oh, tranny hose and just looped it back into the top, so that way fluid will cycle through there because I need this belt to run the fan. Tranny fluid, coolant, power steering, some boom juice, and I think we are good to break in this camp. I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time.
I got some leftover. Oh man, plutonium from the DeLorean video. If you haven't seen the DeLorean video, go check it out. But yep, leftover plutonium. All right, let's give this thing some boom juice and let it eat. Okay, now the main thing now is just making sure we break in the cam right. Flat tap at cams in the last, I would say 10 years have been notorious for going flat on break-ins. But uh, Howard's cams actually assured me that that issue has been resolved. They found that company that was making uh, lifters that didn't have the Rockwell hardness. That issue has been fixed and this cam should break in nicely and make all kinds of horsey powers and lots of booms out the open exhaust manifolds. So it's probably going to sound like a rowdy farm truck, <laughs> but it kind of looks the part anyway. Yeah. I'm a dummy again. I didn't notice that the transmission was missing the whole speedo gear setup. So then as I was putting tranny fluid in it, <laughs> it was coming out. Well, I'm not going to go and track down a speedo gear because I really don't care if it's got a speedometer, but I've got here one of those temporary freeze plugs we're going to shove in there, expand it and call that done and fixed permanently. All right, round two. Got a fresh battery. Got that uh, leak in the transmission plugged. Oh, just need to get it fired up long enough on the starting fluid so it starts to draw fuel and hopefully the carburetor just doesn't leak everywhere. So I'm gonna fire it up and see what happens. Turn the key on. All right, let's try this again. You got anything yet? Nope. You got anything yet? We should have gotten fuel by now. not getting fuel yet. I have traced why it's not drawing fuel. There is a crack in that fuel line right there. See that big old hole? No sucky sucky on the tank means no fuel to the carburetor. So we go ahead and replace that line real quick. Now let's see if we draw fuel. alive but it's dumping fuel in the secondary so i need to uh fix the float on that real quick 
All right, I grabbed another needle and seat out of another carburetor. But the ignition switch itself is junk, so this I'm going to eventually turn into my starter toggle switch, my wiper, or my uh, rear defrost. So that's going to be my toggle switch. But at the moment, we're going to fire this thing back up and finish breaking in the cam. I think we're gonna junk that carburetor. I think it's a piece of shit. But it's a running. It didn't blow up. It didn't throw rods out of it. The pistons weren't clacking and making all kinds of noise. It actually ran. Yeah, I've confirmed it. The carburetor is just officially junk. Check this out. So I thought the uh, accelerator pump was leaking because it was just dripping out of the accelerator pump. It's brand new gasket. So then I'm like, Wait, why is it wet up here? Fuel is just seeping out of the bo out of the uh, body of the uh, float bowl, and if it's that bad, is fuel not seeping everywhere inside the carburetor? I mean, this carburetor was junk. It took three just to make this thing work. So I'm gonna say this carburetor is officially a piece of crap. All right, let me just show you what I'm fighting here. So jumping the coil, fired it back up. That didn't make a difference. It's still blowing a flame out. And if you notice, this used to be all white paint right here. Well, right, yeah, right here, Derek, where I'm pointing. The, uh, well, now there's a lot of green showing because the flames coming up had blown all the paint off. So let me show you what I'm fighting and let me, let me tell you what I think it is now. Oh yeah, gotta use my, my key. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't burn up. Yeah, we, we block the sun. Where is it at? There we go. All right. So you're now joining me inside the Aspen as Derek's getting me uh, plugs and uh, ignition box so we can see if that gets rid of the issue. I just did a compression test on it and granted my gauge was only reading 30 PSI. All the cylinders read 30 PSI. And when you're bumping it over, it's did 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 uh, or no, it was e uh, e uh, e uh. So they all have compression. That's not the issue. It's gotta be that ignition box. I don't know if it's the plugs, but I, I bet it's the ignition box. And to give more racing style points to the Aspen right now, of course, you know, my fancy screwdriver starter here, that, uh, you know, the starting part of the ignition switch is no good. It don't work no more. It's burned up. So what I had done is I found out that my rear defrost was a momentary toggle switch and momentary toggle switches mean race car so i took the switch apart because it wasn't getting contact across the uh terminals and took it apart cleaned up the contacts cut the wire that i need and i'm going to run it through the firewall and hopefully the next thing you'll see is me hitting that switch and the engine going do, 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 do. check this out race car Race car, huh, Derek? <laughs> All race cars have toggle switches. As I was getting ready to put the fuel rail back on, there's something. There was a, like a, like there's, there's stuff stuck inside the fuel rail. 
like completely clogged on the secondaries. We gotta blow this thing out, Derek. This thing is just, it's still stuck with stuff in there. Wouldn't this be a bitch if it was the whole time a fuel flow issue because there was something in the fuel rail? It's still in there. What the hell is that? Oh, there it goes. All right, we got fuel flow now. Well, I still did it. Hold on, let me, I, I, let me let my IQ catch back up to me. It's another day and I'm working on the exhaust. We finally get some mufflers on this thing so we can go wada, 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 without the neighbors like throwing rocks and stones at us. No, I'm just kidding, they're not. They're actually pretty cool. But I don't wanna be that nuisance guy that completely pushes them over the edge. So putting mufflers on it makes them irritated but not like going berserk. So we're gonna put mufflers on it. What are you doing, Derek? Uh, taking the, the valve covers off. The All right, yeah, Derek's taking the valve covers off so that way we can double up the gaskets because it's puking oil. Um, so valve cover gaskets, exhaust, cut a hole in the hood, and uh, heck, I think it's test drive after that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Get the exhaust in. So we can finally hear what this thing sounds like with those awesome porter mufflers. Porter mufflers have made everything we've put on them so far sound aggressive and mean and deep throating. This thing, however, with stock manifolds, I don't know. We'll see. Nope, I'm not trying to get all artsy fartsy on you guys. We're actually doing a racing secret here. We're going stepped exhaust system. Oh yeah, like a NASCAR. So what comes out of here is only two inch. We're putting two and a half on here. So I've cut it so I can shrink it down and upsize it to two and a half inch. And then we're gonna go into a three inch muffler with a Y pipe. So this thing should sound pretty good even with exhaust manifolds and probably pick up like 300 horsepowers. Double the horsepowers. As soon as the world sees this, NASCAR will be calling me to come build their exhaust systems. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> One tack. I'm gonna get burnt. I can see this already happening. Now I know what you're thinking. Holy crap, is that like the coolest thing I've ever seen. But this thing is patented, so don't be going and stealing it now. Let's go ahead and bolt this thing on here and see what it sounds like. I'm afraid it's still gonna sound like ass. There you go, Derek, hold that. Muffler time, time to quiet down this pig so we can actually tune it and work on it and be around it without it just shredding our eardrums. And to do that job, I've got a set of porter mufflers here. Of course, this one's just a cutaway, but I can show you how it's not like your typical glass pack, what people would think when they see something like this. No, it's stainless mesh packed with the spiral steel core so that the, as the sound waves travel through there, it gets caught in the ripples and the ripples pull it into the sound deadening material and it actually sounds really good like it it makes it sound throaty i love the way these things sound so of course we're going to take this and put this on the aspen 
Here's our corner muff. We're going to slip this thing on to see if it changes the note. If you can make it sound less like farm truck, that's a win. It's so much quieter now, isn't it, Derek? Yeah, it sure is. Alright, let's give it a wrap. I'm gonna say it sounds better. I'll go with that. Yeah, this is a uh, big dumbass moment for me right now. <laughs> I uh, The whole problem with the engine the entire time was nothing mechanical nothing it wasn't the bow register it wasn't any of that crap that i was thinking you know i set the distributor in this thing when it was on the stand and uh when i was arranging plug wires i had four and three cross so it's one eight four three i had one eight three four that was why it was banging out the carburetor and running like ass when you would snap the throttle now this thing is so freaking mean sounding watch this now that it's running on all eight cylinders oh yeah well listen to this thing yeah oh geez this thing sounds so mean now <laughs> dumbass Frisbee. Okay. Now I got to cut the inner gizzards. Make it lighter, I have. Everything is cooler with a big hole in the hood. Too, poor, too wet to, to go fast, so we're just gonna kind of break the car in, just check it out. And then also, the Aspen is here. Both times I wanted to take it out and beat on it out in the desert, yeah, it was too windy. So I figured today, you know what, today's a good day to get it broke in and see if it's actually gonna throw pistons out the exhaust, like Gary says. I'll break it in. Break <laughs> All the cackle fest over there. All right, but yeah, I just want to break this car in, see what it's going to do. I have literally not driven this thing at all. Finally getting to drive the Aspen for the first time, but I just realized I'm getting ready to pull in the lineup for the autocross. I never even bed the brakes. I haven't done nothing. I've never, I haven't driven this car. I was supposed to get out in the desert and race it, and that opportunity kept going away because of the wind or weather, but we're going to definitely beat the brakes in now. Hot cold. <laughs> Mike's son is riding with me. Alright, we gotta get out, Colton. Let's go walk back to the pits. 
it's okay. Look, look, I'll get you back in on the next run. With a helmet's okay, right? Now this is legit the first time actually driving this car. And holy crap did it not turn or accelerate. The ride heights were maxed out. It had 215 14-inch wheels up front. Dude, how much crap is in the trunk? I didn't realize that the trunk was full of stuff still. Yeah, when you tried to accelerate, you just, ah, it just would not go. The carburetor is way too big. It had a two inch carb spacer on it. It was geared way too tall. So when you mat it, you just, ah, you just, but as soon as you got it over like 4,000 RPM, oh, then it would start to take off and just blow the inside rear tire off. It looked like it was a drag car with the front end way up in the air. still fun though for a hunk of crap it was still fun but I've got to make this thing better so I went home and I robbed the uh, wider 15 inch wheels steering. off of uh, Smurf to bring back to the track for the next day and the power steering now I have no power steering yeah would not last three laps brand new starter in the Aspen just took a crap on me so I'm having to replace it. I haven't even got to run it today yet. We're putting the bigger meats on it. I lowered the front end of the car. I got to readjust the camber and then take it out and see what it does. I'm hoping I can get it into the mid 60s. That would be a win. So we'll see what happens. But right now I'm gonna pump the starter out. Not a whole lot of time, so not a lot of video. got the Aspen in in low kill mode now got it slammed down we got some camber in the thing replace the starter hopefully this thing runs pretty good find out here in a little bit we've had to fix all that stuff Mike put a new wheel cylinder on the left rear we actually got four wheel brakes now and shiny wheels shiny goes fast right yeah wash the weight off of it so now we're gonna watch Mike go pathetically slow in a fast car. Haven't done a whole lot of filming because it's just been super swamp fixing cars. Uh, should be good now though. All right, I threw more jet at it, hoping it would kind of help the bog. No, it made the bog worse. Like we didn't have a whole lot of laps to actually test. But those bigger meats, oh, it made it turn so much. Oh, look at that guy right there. Yeah, styling. Palm power steering when it worked. You had to completely top off the reservoir in order for it to last three laps. It leaked that bad. <laughs> Sorry to the rest of the autocross guys. Just look at the, look at the way the earth tilts in this thing. Oh yeah, you unload that inner rear tire and you can't run and start smoking it. And no pistons exited the engine, even though they were welded up. You can hear it start to clean up once it went above like 4,000. Oh, if this thing had power when I was doing this, it would have been so much. It actually probably could have been competition for the general. That smoke you're seeing, I would say that's horsepower being leaking from the tires, but no, that's power steering fluid spraying all over the exhaust. You had to really hang on to stuff. Look at the lean of that uh, air fresher there. Whip it, whip it good. There you go. Coming across the finish. Finally, spare time to get all a right. haircut. I had no intentions of autocrossing this car, but. Since the other uh, off-road races I had planned with my buddies kept getting canceled because of wind or injury or whatever, I'm like, you know what, we need to test this car. So I went ahead and we brought it to Matt's and this thing actually performed <laughs> way better than I thought it would. Granted, it did suck on acceleration. Like the carburetor and the carburetor and the carb spacer are totally wrong for this setup. I mean, 
This is an 850 double pumper and it has a two inch carb spacer on it. And I, I put the carb spacer on there because it was given to me by you guys. So I put it on there and the only carburetor I had that worked was the 850 at the time. And holy crap, was this thing a dirty turd below like 4,000 RPM, especially with that rear gear that's in this thing. This thing is geared tall, but once you get this thing a rolling, then it starts just smoking that inside rear tire around the corners. And this thing actually hooked. Like it turned really well. It's actually kind of surprised me. I think it's because it's pretty light. It has a small block, so it's less nose weight, shorter wheelbase. So the F bodies, maybe not that bad. And maybe you guys should consider these things for some jalopy cars to go beat around on because they actually don't handle too bad. I dig it. I'll raise it back up, put my off-road tires on it, and then hopefully I can finally challenge a freaking side-by-side -side that will show up. Maybe they're just all afraid of the Aspen. I've been in Las Vegas since 1992 and I've never been out here I've never had any off-road vehicles really but I do now all right we are out here the Aspen is here damn it Derek is here but this time it's the damn it Bert song because to show how crappy of a youtuber I am I forgot the batteries and the SD cards yeah Luckily, we have one GoPro with one battery and one SD card. But we do have two cell phones between us and one Walmart cheapo camcorder. So we're just gonna make the best of this. Come on, little Aspen, don't fail us now. Whoa, it starts in any gear, that's right. <laughs> you ready, Derek? Yeah find a spot we can finally play. Holy crap, this place is rugged. Oh, all oh, this place is just surrounded by freaking rocks, rocks this big everywhere. Holy crap. I hope the whole thing isn't like as jagged rocks as this. Something's banging on the floorboard already. We're not even going fast. Oh. I hope this whole thing isn't just whoops. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. Holy crap, this is nothing but whoops. I hate whoops. If we can't even go fast because it's nothing but whoops, we're just going to kill the freaking car. I think ahead though, I see smoother ground. Like trying to do anything, but 
I think up ahead there might be like an off-road course. Like a cobbled together one. Oh. 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 So I went and talked to a couple of dirt bikers over there and I asked them, I was like, hey, is there any like smooth-ish place to ride around here? And they're like, no, not in that thing. And I'm like, crap. But it looks like there's a couple smooth spots here we can maybe have a little bit of fun on. So uh, we're going to have at it. Come on, Aspen, don't let me down.
still stuck. <laughs> I think the Aspen's had enough for a day, but this thing is freaking awesome. Ugh. I think you need to let it cool down. It didn't have any power no more to go up the hill because it's overheating. But this thing, those welded up pistons are still working. Everything is still working, except for it's overheated. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why you wouldn't go up the hill. I don't know if the Aspen survived or not. I mean, that's to tell. All I know is I couldn't go up the hills anymore because they got flat tires. It's overheating. But this thing was a riot and it went anywhere. Anywhere we tried to go, it would go. So the Aspen. Oh, that's hot is the perfect off-road vehicle. <laughs> the dashboard fell out of it. That's the, that's the glove box and the dash. <laughs> Maybe off-road suspension would help a little. And some shocks. And some suspension seats. But the helmet did its job when I hit the ceiling. still a little toasty and I don't know if it even has any water left in it. I think we just irrigated the desert, Derek. But uh, I'm hungry. Let's go home. Come on, Aspen. It's a long walk back to the truck. <laughs> I forgot the throttle stuck. <laughs> the throttle stuck. Pull the hood up and down. There it goes. Okay. All right, we got it. Here you go. Oh shit! You lose your oil cap. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna find that. Throttle freed up. All right, now let's go. They say you get out There's times I get the feeling that I've seen this all before. And it's hard to tell the difference in what's real anymore. And this bottle doesn't have, but it sure does numb the pain. Change the more they stay the same.
There's so many trails. Derek, I think we're lost. A skit I was gonna do before we took off where uh, you know I'm here to race cars and eat donuts but uh, I'm all out of donuts but <laughs> yeah after these donuts are riding in the car <laughs> they are so full of dirt but I'm hungry <laughs> oh gritty it's like micro sprinkles. I can feel it in my teeth. Victory donut. You want a victory donut, Derek? That one's worse. Oh. But it tastes so good. 